Anybody who's been watching Black Bear Forge for any length of time knows I use a belt grinder quite often. I find them to be very fast, very efficient, and they can be a very precise tool if you have the right belt grinder and use it properly. Now most people think of belt grinders as being a tool of a knife maker, and I'll get more into that in here in a little bit, but even in a general blacksmith shop, a belt grinder is an extremely useful piece of equipment. And I get a lot of questions about my belt grinders. So I thought I would go over that real quick and then introduce you to the newest addition to the fleet. Now the grinder that gets the most interest is this great big three by 132 inch belt grinder. That's the width of the belt and the overall length of the belt. The most common grinders you find in a blacksmith shop or especially a knife maker shop, usually two by 72 but they're available or can be custom made in just about any size. People want to know, what is it? Where can I buy one? Well, you can't buy one just like this as far as I know. This one was one that was built by a friend of mine with parts that he got from somebody else. And then he decided it was just too big for his shop and he didn't really do that much big heavy grinding. This thing runs at something like 5,500 surface feet per minute. That's about 60 miles an hour if you need a reference point and it moves a lot of metal. So for rough grinding things like axes and adzes, this is really a great grinder and I use it quite a bit. But it is a shop built grinder and you'd have to find the parts and I don't even know where all these parts came from. I bought it just the way you see it. I haven't done anything to it. Although I wouldn't mind configuring it maybe as a four wheel machine so that it takes up a little less floor space. But it works really well the way it is so I hate to start tinkering with it and mess something up. Now my oldest grinder, I've had this for over 30 years. This is a Wilton square wheel. Wilton no longer makes a square wheel. I think they're now made by Jet. But the people I know that have a Jet square wheel grinder say they're still a really good grinder. This has been a real workhorse. I have used it for all sorts of stuff. I have abused it. It's starting to get a little bit tired and worn out. I need to replace the tracking wheel and the contact wheel could probably use recovering because it's a little broken down on the corners. Although I use that as a feature quite often. This one I think runs 4,200 surface feet per minute, so it's a little bit slower than the other one. It's a two by 72 grinder, single speed, one horsepower motor, but it has been a great grinder. It was a huge purchase back when I did that. I was just getting started, just looking at being a knife maker, thought I was gonna make my fortune making custom knives. And this was gonna be the tool that made all that possible. And while it was really a stretch of the family budget at the time, in fact, I think my ex-wife still hasn't forgiven me for buying this, it has paid for itself many times over. That brings us to this homemade grinder. This is another 2x72 machine that I built sort of loosely based on the KMG grinder from Beaumont Metalworks. And Beaumont sells all the parts, the wheels, the contact wheels, motors, pulleys, things like that, so that you can build your own grinder. And while their parts are excellent, my interpretation of the grinder wasn't so good. It's a little bit loose and sloppy, and that means it doesn't track real well and doesn't always work as well as I would like it to work, and therefore I don't use it that much, although it does slow way down, and for doing final grinding and sharpening on axes, adzes, the occasional knife that I make, this is really not a bad grinder, but it seriously lacks the precision to do any serious knife work. And that sort of alludes to the reason why I'm adding a new grinder to this fleet of grinders. Matter of fact, it'll probably just replace this one. I don't think I'll get rid of it right away. But I'm going to put the new grinder right here. Now I thought I'd tell you a little bit about why I'm looking at a more precise grinder and why I'm talking a little bit about knife making. But if you don't want to hear the backstory on that and want to jump ahead to see the new grinder, you can use that scroll bar down here at the bottom of the video. And it's broken up into chapters, so you can just jump right ahead. In fact, that's something I'm doing on most of my videos these days. So if there's ever a section you don't want to watch or you want to just get to a specific part of the video, especially if you're re-watching trying to find a certain bit of information, you can use those chapter breaks. And they are labeled down at the bottom of the video if you hover over that with your mouse or they're down in the video description where you can just click on them and jump to the part of the video you want. Now, 30 plus years ago, I thought I was going to be a knife maker. I quickly found out I wasn't really all that good at high-end knives. I made a lot of knives for people in the rendezvous crowd, but since I don't really do that anymore, those rustic, primitive-style knives aren't really something that I would sell a lot of. And I do sell a lot of other woodworking tools. 
And while I sell a lot of those woodworking tools online, we also attend some in-person shows, things like Lee Nielsen hand tool events, woodworking in America, handworks, things like that. And those are places people come to buy tools. And I sell a lot of holdfasts at those shows, but holdfasts are big, they're heavy. I don't really want to take four, five, six dozen holdfasts to a show, especially in my little car. And it gets a little expensive to rent a van or a bigger vehicle just to drive to those shows. So Janet and I were talking this year and sort of wondering, well, are we going to keep doing the shows? None of those shows happened last year during the pandemic, so we didn't go to any of them. Didn't really miss them financially that much to a large extent. They're sort of a break-even deal by the time you pay travel expenses. But they are fun, and I do like meeting with people and talking to people. And having some other options to sell isn't a bad idea. In the past, I've made some little wood carving knives, often referred to as a sloyd knife, and some hooked spoon knives. And while those are something I can do pretty readily with the grinders I have, they aren't quite as refined, they aren't quite as perfect as I would like. And a lot of that is because I can't do the finish work with the precision I need on a grinder where the belt's wobbling around all the time. That's really distracting. And I'd have to completely reinvent the wheel on this, and I just don't have time to do that. And there's some other reasons this isn't the grinder that I really want. So after talking about it and deciding that, yes, we want to do the shows, and yes, I need to find some products that I can make that are lighter and smaller but still have the value that make them worth taking, I decided to start making more of these Scandinavian-style carving knives or Sloyd knives, and that meant a new grinder would be really nice to have, not vital by any means. And I had been looking at Beaumont Metalworks for quite some time, both when I bought all these parts. I liked their KMG grinder. I just didn't feel like I could afford it at that time. And since then, they've come up with the KMG TX, or the Knife Maker's Grinder Tilting Extreme. And that ability to tilt a grinder is something that I really wanted. Watching some of the people who make better sloyd knives and spoon knives, a lot of them were using a horizontal grinder to establish this bevel on the spoon knives. And that made it a lot easier and a lot more precise than trying to work vertically like this. So I knew that was something I wanted. I decided to go ahead and stretch my credit card a little bit and go in debt and buy one. And hopefully after a year or two of going to shows and selling these knives at shows and selling them online, that grinder is going to pay for itself just like the old Wilton has paid for itself. So my goal today is to take this grinder off the bench, put it away somewhere where I can get it out and fix it or sell it, depending on what I decide to do in the future. Unbox the KMG and see if it's going to work right here. There are some reasons it may not work here as well as I would like, but I'll talk about that when we get to that point. While all of this stuff is related, it didn't all come with the grinder, so we'll look at some of this later. Now this video is not sponsored by KMG. I paid full price for the grinder because it was the grinder I wanted in my shop. These days, that sheet of plywood is just like getting money in the mail. Now, I'm afraid this may be a little tall in this horizontal position for this particular bench, so I'm going to have to kind of look at it, decide if I need to recess this and build a, a platform so this can drop. But I have to stay aware of where this motor needs to swing to pull that off. You know, really, that might not be bad. I think I'm going to set it up like this and try it out and just see what I think. It'll be a little bit weird for heavy stuff, but I'm probably not going to do that much really heavy work on this. This is going to be more for final refinement of axes and adzes, and things like that. This isn't where we're going to go to grind some finial on a great big gate project or something like that. This does come with the motor attached, but the VFD is in a separate box. 
so you have to do that final hookup yourself. But it does come with good instructions and it's very straightforward. This has two different places you can put these tooling arms. The lower slot means you can't put a tool rest in there, so if I had a tool rest I'd put it in the upper slot. And that's probably where I'll leave it most of the time because I do have a tool rest that will go with this. This came with a 10 inch contact wheel and with a flat platen and the plate can come out of here and use this as a slack belt attachment if you want to, so very useful there. Very nice tracking control. This is about 50% speed. Full speed on this thing moves pretty quick. So here it is, the KMG Tilting Extreme Belt Grinder, all set up, ready to go to work. As I said earlier, I'm not being sponsored by KMG. I paid full price for the grinder. In fact, they have no idea I'm even doing this video. So hopefully they like the video as much as I like the grinder. I am, on the other hand, sponsored by Combat Abrasives. And that's where I've been getting all of my abrasive belts. I've been very happy with the belts from Combat Abrasives. If you need some, there's a link in the video description with a discount code, BLACKBEAR10, so you can get a discount on your order. Now, tilting this thing couldn't be easier. You just, just release one lever to loosen it up. And then it's got a spring-loaded detent here, or lock, or whatever you want to call it. And you can spin it over sideways. Now, using this wheel sideways probably isn't going to be very practical. I don't see doing that. But putting the platen on there sideways is going to be really useful. And the tool rest system that I have will come up here and sit right next to this platen, which is why I went with the tool rest I did. But this video is getting a little long, so I think we're going to save looking at that tool rest for a future video. Now, why did I go with the KMG grinder? Well, for one thing, I've always been kind of impressed with the design of the KMG grinders back from their original model. And when I saw the tilting grinder, I knew I was going to want a tilting grinder at some point. It really looks like it's going to be a useful thing in my shop. And like I said, for those curved spoon carving knives, I think it'll be an excellent tool for that. But besides that, since that homemade grinder was based off of KMG parts and used the KMG tooling arms, that meant everything I have for that grinder can be used on this grinder. So I have another contact wheel and I have a rotary platen and I have a small wheel attachment, all of that kind of stuff that's just gonna go right onto this grinder. I'm not gonna have to adapt anything or do anything different and that's gonna make life a lot easier and save some money buying attachments in the future. This is what Janet would refer to as a Barbie doll, because once you buy the Barbie doll, you need to get all the accessories. One of the things that does make this grinder nicer than a lot of the others is that it has little flat plates that push against the tooling arm when you clamp them in place, whereas a lot of the other grinders, just the end of the bolt clamps down to the tooling arm, and that means this isn't going to gouge the tooling arms. Not such a big deal on the steel arms like I was using, but this one came with aluminum arms, which are a lot lighter, and if I got them on a rack up here, it'd be a lot easier to get the aluminum ones down. And this won't gouge the aluminum arms, so it's a real improvement over some of the early grinders. Another thing I really like about this is the belt tensioning. My other one had a spring in it, and yeah, it was sort of okay, sort of not. This one has a ratcheting system on it, has a release here, and that takes the pressure off. You can also take pressure off by loosening the, the arm like this. But once you put a fresh belt on, you just, you just push up on the ratchet, locks in place. As long as you got the tension right, you're ready to go. Now, does this mean we're gonna be looking at more knife making on this channel? Probably to some small degree, although once I've looked at the style of knives that I'm thinking of making, we probably won't do a whole lot of knife making. And I certainly have no intention on turning the focus of this channel into knife making in general. But I am gonna be doing a little bit more of that so I can have smaller, lighter weight, more easily transportable things to take to some of these woodworking shows. But most of what I'm going to do are going to be woodworking specific knives. I'm probably not gonna make a lot of hunting knives and throwing knives and things like that. Doesn't mean I won't make any, but it's not gonna be my primary focus by any means. So with that said, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos. 
If you'd like shorter format videos, check out my second channel, Black Bear Forge 2, and I'll link to it right down here. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.